There is a silent architect in your mind. It works while you sleep, while you're distracted, slowly rebuilding the very structure of who you are. This architect isn't a part of you. It's a response to what happened to you. We call it trauma. And it's more than just a bad memory. It's a physical, biological event that leaves an imprint on the most important organ you own, your brain. For a long time, we thought of trauma as a purely psychological wound, a story of the past. But we now know it's a story that your brain cells are telling every single second. Today, we're pulling back the curtain and looking at the blueprints. This is how trauma slowly and quietly changes your brain. Number one, the overactive alarm system. Deep inside your brain, there's a small, almond-shaped structure called the amygdala. Think of it as your body's smoke detector. Its job is to scan for danger, and when it finds it, sound the alarm. This triggers the fight-or-flight response, flooding your body with adrenaline and cortisol, preparing you to survive. This is a brilliant system. It saves lives. But after trauma, this smoke detector becomes faulty. It's been through a real fire, and now it can't tell the difference between a genuine threat and a little bit of smoke from burnt toast. The amygdala becomes hyperactive and hypersensitive. It starts to see danger everywhere. This is why a car backfiring on the street can send a jolt of pure panic through your body. It's why a raised voice in the next room can make your heart pound in your chest. Your brain isn't just remembering the danger, it's re-experiencing it on a cellular level. You might logically know you're safe, but your amygdala is screaming that you're not. This creates a constant, low-level hum of anxiety, a state of being always on guard, waiting for the other shoe to drop. Your body is keeping a score it was never meant to hold. Number two, the fragmented memory. The hippocampus is your brain's librarian. It takes your experiences, catalogs them, and files them away as neat, orderly memories with a beginning, a middle, and an end. It helps you understand that the past is the past. When a traumatic event happens, the brain is flooded with stress hormones like cortisol. This cortisol is toxic to the hippocampus. It disrupts its ability to do its job properly. So instead of filing the traumatic experience away as a coherent story, it gets shattered into pieces. This is why traumatic memories are so strange. They aren't like normal memories. They come back as raw, sensory fragments. A smell, a sound, a flash of an image, a feeling of physical pain. There's no context, no timeline. It feels like it's happening right now because, to your brain, it is. The hippocampus failed to stamp it with the label, past. At the same time, this damage can make it harder to form new memories. Life can feel blurry or foggy. You might have trouble remembering what you did yesterday or struggle to learn new things. The past isn't a story you can read. It's a shattered mirror you're trying to piece together. Number three, the weakened decision maker. At the front of your brain, right behind your forehead, is the prefrontal cortex, or PFC. This is the CEO of your brain. It's responsible for rational thought, problem solving, emotional regulation, and impulse control. Crucially, one of the PFC's main jobs is to calm down the amygdala. When the amygdala screams, danger, the PFC is supposed to step in and say, hey, calm down. It's just a car backfiring. We're safe. Trauma weakens the connection between the prefrontal cortex and the amygdala. It's like the phone line between the CEO and the security office has been cut. The amygdala's alarm bell rings, but the PFC's calming, rational voice can't get through. This leaves you at the mercy of your emotions. You might find yourself reacting with intense anger or fear to small triggers, and you feel powerless to stop it. You might become more impulsive, struggling with long-term planning, because your brain is so focused on surviving the present moment. It's a frustrating internal battle. The rational mind knows the storm has passed, but the emotional brain is still lost at sea. Number four, the altered sense of self. We all have a default way our brain operates when we're not focused on the outside world. This is called the default mode network, or DMN. It's active when you daydream, think about your future, or reflect on who you are as a person. It's the network that builds your sense of self, your life's narrative. Trauma throws this network into chaos, Studies show that in traumatized individuals, the DMN is often disrupted. The thoughts that loop through your mind when you're at rest might change from neutral daydreams to repetitive thoughts about the trauma, about your own perceived failings, or about your safety. This is where feelings of worthlessness and shame take root. The trauma stops being an event and starts becoming an identity. The brain's narrative-making machine gets stuck on one chapter, 
and it plays it over and over again. This can also lead to dissociation, that feeling of being disconnected from your own body, like you're watching your life from a distance. You start to believe the trauma isn't something that happened to you, but rather, it is who you are. Number five, the body that never rests. Your body's stress response system is designed for short sprints, not marathons. When faced with a threat, it releases cortisol and adrenaline to help you survive. Once the threat is gone, the system is supposed to power down and your body returns to a state of rest. Chronic, unresolved trauma leaves this system stuck in the on position. Your brain continuously signals that there is a threat, so your body is constantly marinating in stress hormones. You are running a marathon every single day, even when you are standing still. This has devastating effects on your physical health. It leads to chronic fatigue, where you feel completely exhausted, but you can't relax or sleep properly. It can cause digestive issues, chronic pain, headaches, and a weakened immune system. You might feel wired and tired all the time. This isn't a psychological symptom, it's a physiological reality. Your brain's altered state is creating real, tangible stress in every part of your body. Number six, the muted world. What happens when a part of your brain is screaming in pain 24 seven? Sometimes the only way to cope is to turn the volume down, way down. The brain, in a desperate attempt to protect you from the overwhelming pain of the trauma, can decide to numb everything. This is a state known as emotional numbing. It's not just the bad feelings that get muted, the good ones do too. You might find that you don't feel joy the way you used to. A beautiful sunset, a hug from a loved one, a favorite song, they just don't register. You feel flat, empty, like a ghost in your own life. People might describe you as distant or detached. The truth is, it's a survival mechanism. Your brain has essentially blown a fuse to prevent the whole system from being overloaded by pain. But in doing so, it has also cut the power to connection, to passion, and to happiness. To avoid the pain, the brain turns down the volume on life itself, forgetting that joy and sorrow are sung in the same key. Number seven, the fading trust in others. Humans are social creatures. Our brains are wired for connection. But what happens when the source of our deepest wound is another human being? Trauma? especially trauma caused by other people, fundamentally rewires the parts of our brain responsible for trust, empathy, and social bonding. It teaches the brain a very simple, brutal lesson. People are not safe. This makes relationships incredibly difficult. You may start to isolate yourself, believing it's better to be alone than to risk being hurt again. You might find yourself constantly scanning people for signs of betrayal, assuming the worst intentions. Even when someone is kind, a part of your brain is whispering, it's a trap. This can lead to a profound sense of loneliness, a feeling of being on the outside looking in. You desperately want to connect, but your brain's rewired survival instincts are actively working against it. The walls you build to keep the pain out also keep the connection from coming in. These changes are not a choice. They are not a sign of weakness or a character flaw. They are a testament to what you survived. Your brain did what it had to do to get you through an impossible situation. It adapted. And the most important thing to know is this. The brain is remarkable. It is plastic, which means it is capable of changing. The same brain that was rewired by trauma can be rewired again towards healing and safety. Understanding these changes is the first, most powerful step. It's the moment you stop blaming yourself and start understanding your brain's journey. It's the moment you realize you are not broken you are adapting, and you can adapt again. If this video resonated with you, and you feel it might help someone else understand what they're going through, please give it a like. It helps the video reach more people who might need to hear this message. And subscribe for more content that explores the incredible, complex world of the human mind. Now I want to ask something for the comments. Without sharing any personal details you're uncomfortable with, which one of these points was the most surprising or the most relatable for you to learn about. Sharing your answer might make someone else reading feel a little less alone in their experience. Let's create a space of understanding down below. Thank you for watching.